So guys, we've just taken a break from a couple of demos that Kurt has very kindly showed us. We've genuinely been blown away yeah. by this so far. So we're really excited, Kurt, to chat to you in a little bit more detail, a couple of questions that we've got lined up for you, interested to hear your thoughts. Obviously, we're coming from like a consumer point of view, right? So we listen to a lot of products all day, every day, test them out for our videos, but it's really nice to meet in the middle, someone who's actually creating what we get to listen to. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a really nice dynamic and we'd love to get your thoughts on a couple of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, first and foremost, I know we caught up a couple of weeks back and had a brief chat, but the thing that I'm most interested in, I guess, is, is your thoughts on, obviously, on Atmos and how you see Atmos in the future. Do you see this as being the progression that, that Stereo was from Mono? Is Atmos going to be the next thing moving on from that? Yeah, I feel, well, I feel like that now. Um, I think if you'd asked me two years ago, mm. then I'd have been very much, for me getting into it, um, it was very much this seems like the right thing to be doing you know we were coming out of covid studios weren't open and this new format was coming around and for me it was a case of i'm really into it i like it i don't know if it's going to be around in you know two years time in music yeah but it's always going to be around in film and games mm. so if i get into it and i go down that trajectory mm. um now we're two years on and you know like you've seen bigger artists every week this album's releasing you know in atmos yeah bigger artists most labels it feels like it's the right progression mm. it feels like things are definitely going that way and are you finding from that then are you spending all of your time mixing in atmos now do you still do stuff in stereo or is it pretty much all atmos now for you yeah for me it's purely atmos um i occasionally dip in you know like cover sessions you know where I'll, i might record a vocal for, mm. for stereo chances are that track will get made into you know atmos at some point yeah but yeah um me day to day i'm i'm mixing that last I mean, we just had the demos now obviously you mm. guys will not be able to hear this because that would yeah. be very complicated <laughs> and it would never come across how it is in the room but we were just saying it's kind of ruined listening um <laughs> yeah again, it definitely has. ever again i mean the environment can you just talk us through how many speakers we've got in this room to achieve that kind of effect we've just heard yeah, yeah so we're a, uh, a 914 setup um so we've got um lcr two wides two sides two rears and then four on the heights. And what mm. brand have, have we got in here? Oh, these are PMCs, um, MB3s at the front and CI series for the heights and surrounds. Cool, yeah. And what are we looking at roughly if you were to put a price on the kit in here? At least in the hundreds. Yeah. hundred, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. We're coming at it from a kind of consumer point of view. Obviously they haven't got this budget. Yeah. <laughs> and so how do you find, how difficult is it having an environment like this where you're able to put things where you want to put them around a room mm -hmm. and have this kind of kit and then achieving something that's just as enjoyable or as enjoyable as you can be in a pair of, you know, or something that costs you sub 500 pounds maybe or a pair of headphones? Yeah, so the um, so with these, these are, you know, pretty transparent. The idea of the PMCs is that there's, there's no, um, there's no EQ in the low ends or highs yeah. or anything. There's nothing They're boosted. Neutral. Yeah, everything's completely neutral. So the benefit of these is what what I get in the room is completely flat, completely transparent as to how it's meant to sound, mm. ideally. Um, we've got another room that's a fairly similar setup. So I know roughly what, you know, if I'm mixing here, I know what it's going to sound like in your room. I think, you know, been in here long enough now that I know what it's going to sound like in, you know, in headphones, if it's the Apple headphones, if it's, you know, listening binaurally on um, on my normal headphones mm. um i think ultimately when you when you're mixing in atmos you're making two mixers so you're always making one for headphones that needs to translate in that way um for me i'm very much you know i like to focus on that headphone mix yeah. you know when i've done a day mixing i'll take an mp4 away i'll take a binaural wav and i'll make sure you know i'll listen back to things you know on the commute so i'm in a the same situation that someone you know would generally be listening in listening, yeah. yeah and i'll make notes based on you know if anything pokes out while i'm just listening generally those are the things i'll come in the next day and i'll tweak and i'll you know i'll make sure it's fixed before anyone else so you've got an era 300 haven't you yeah and how does that play a part in kind of your process so like how much how are you using that in your day-to-day -day? it's sat in my living room it's same with the headphones it's a case of listening in a domestic setting yeah mm. so like i say done with a mix and I will I'll make the mp4 and then with uh, with the Sonos there's a way that you can um, stream mp4s from um, from the Sonos software um, so I'll do it you know like in situations where I'm literally cleaning the house you know washing the dishes something I've got that on and if anything stands out to me like listening on the headphones mm -hmm. then that's where you know I make the notes and those are the things that I you know come back to address yeah but I think having having a loudspeaker now and not just having you know 
listened on headphones and listened on the commute. Yeah. I've got another element where I can listen, you know, out loud in a room and kind of gauge what you're going to get on like your Apple HomePods or your Echo Studios, you know, these things that are Atmos enabled. I think, you know, having listened and compared a few, I think the Sonos is, you know, the best of the bunch, mm -hmm. but it gives a pretty good representation of what you're going to get on that type of technology. Do you typically find that initially after a first mix, there are things that really jump out and you've got to come back in and tweak? Is there sometimes where you get it spot on the first time? Like, <laughs> how, what's that See, sort of? It's hit and miss, it depends. Mm. Um, most of the time, it feels like I, I do a lot of um, AB in between the Atmos and the stereo yeah. in the room and making sure that those levels match up. More often than not, it tends to be roughly where I want it. You know, mm. like it might be certain things like the backing vocals too loud or, you know, there's a synth poking out and it's like, it's one or two things normally that just need dialing back. Um, I find in my room with the Sonos, it feels like the, um, the sides are bouncing off the walls mm. and I find every time I listen to it, I'm kind of, every time I listen to any of the mixes I'm doing, I'm kind of more and more impressed by the backing vocals, like holding the space in the room. Yeah. Um, I, I tend to find with backing vocals, I more often than not, they'll start in the sides. They may end up somewhere else, but mm. if, if something works in the sides, I'll keep it there. Yeah. Listening back on the Sonos and hearing it in the room, it's like, it's great in headphones, but to hear it in the room and hear it bouncing off the walls mm. and creating that space, um, that's yeah it's it's a good feeling <laughs> is it's the first time to be fair like mixing on listening back on headphones is beneficial and that's probably 90 percent of where people are going to listen to to atmos yeah. or yeah. have access to atmos music um but listening in my living room is the first time in a long time that i've actually felt like a mixer yeah. you know like listening back to something out loud and like, yeah so would you say like your experience of using the Era 300, would you say it's been fairly positive? Have mm. you enjoyed using that speaker as a bit of a, not like necessarily a reference monitor, but something that you're coming back to, testing, coming back in and tweaking? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm loving it. I think um, I do a thing every Friday, I'll listen to um, new releases, yeah. see what other people are doing, see what's coming out, um, mm -hmm. see what's now available in Atmos. Um, I think more, than, more often than not, I'm introduced to like, newer bands and artists because it's available in Atmos. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm going out yeah. my way to listen to because listen. it's available. Yeah. Mm. Um, before, you know, I'd be listening on the, the Apple AirPods um, and now I'm listening on the Sonos out loud. Yeah, so obviously when we talk about Atmos, movies kind of came first yeah. before music. Mm -hmm. So I guess from your point of view, Kurt, what do you think are like the key differences between the movie side of Atmos mixing and then the music side? And why is it taking why longer? Is it, yeah, why is it taking longer? Yeah, I, don't, I, I think for cinema, it's um, it made sense. You know, it's been around for, what, 10, 12 years in, mm. in cinema. Um, I think for sound effects, for dialogue, well, the majority of the dialogue is kept in the centre speaker, but as an end, you know, a natural progression from 5.1, mm. it makes sense in cinema. Um, I think with music, it's been the technology, um, you know, like with the, uh, the AirPods and things. Mm. I don't know if headphones were quite at, or, you know, the, the renderer technology, if it yeah. was quite at the right place for music at that so time. So do you think it's the products that's driving the demand for the type of content that's being put out, rather than people being like, this is the new type of content you want to listen to and we're therefore we need products to, do you know what I mean? So yeah. with, with movies, I get what you're saying, it's easier because you can have your, your sound bars, you, it's easier yeah. to do. So therefore, do you think it's the fact that there's been no real push in demand for music because there's no way of actually enjoying it personally? I think there's kind of like a, a bit of a loop now, whereas, you know, you've got a company like Apple that want to sell headphones. Mm -hmm. So they start backing spatial audio and now they can offer that as a service, which in turn sells headphones. Mm -hmm. Dolby, you know, they they want to get Atmos music out there. It may, yeah. you know, it, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Then you've got your other companies jumping on the idea of Atmos because obviously then that sells products. Mm. In turn, you've got Apple then have uh, more subscribers, Amazon have more subscribers, Tidal have more subscribers. <laughs> There's this, yeah, just a, yeah. a loop that, yeah. you know, a, a cycle that continues. Um, I think right now, um, as consumer products go, like we've got your, your sky glass and your TVs and things that are putting Atmos into the TV that makes sense. And then you've got your Apple TV app that will play in Atmos. So it's almost like these things are sneakily getting into your house without you necessarily realizing yeah. that you've yeah. already got mm -hmm. it. And it just becomes part and parcel of how you enjoy your content. Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, I mean, if you 
you know, companies like your Amazons and your Googles start looking into that technology and start putting, you know, more Atmos enabled speakers in your house, then it's, um, we're not that far a leap from it, I don't think. No. no. What would you say are like the differences between spatial audio, Dolby, 360, like, what are your kind of thoughts on all the differences in <laughs> terminology and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, I think spatial is kind of a, uh, a blanket term. That I guess Apple have coined. Yeah. Um, for me, Atmos kind of covers the spatial thing. Um, 360 as a format is, for me, it's not quite where Atmos is. Yeah. Um, we've done we've we've mixed things that have gone out in um, mixed in Atmos, and then um, converted to 360 for mainly the Sony labels because yeah. they have to release in uh, in 360. Um, last year I, I worked on something that went out um, and then it was converted on uh, on the Sony side of things. What actually released as 360 didn't sound anything like the Atmos mix that mm. I'd done. Um, so we ended up getting the Sony software, uh, the, uh, the 360 software, so we can do conversions in-house now and get things sounding as close as possible to the Atmos. Um, what I find with 360 is so in Atmos, you've, um, uh, you can work with objects and you can pull sounds into the room as close as you like, so like in towards your head. Um, with 360, everything's kind of stuck to the wall. Yeah. Right. And if you're, you can move it around that wall, but you can't move it mm. inwards. You can move it up and down, but the whole time you're stuck to this sphere, so essentially. You get stuff that like passes through one ear to the other. Yeah. You'd not get that with 360. No. Right. You get it go around you mm -hmm. or over you. Yeah. Um, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the um, yeah with three sixty, it's kind of like what I was saying about those binaural settings for Atmos. Mm. So with Atmos, you can choose how near, mid, or far an object is. Mm -hmm. um, with three sixty, it's almost like everything's stuck to far mm -hmm. or mid, um, and you can't change that. Yeah. So. I think that's where you've got those main differences. I think with Sony being a Japanese company, um, 360's big in Japan. Yeah. So that's the only reason Atmos hasn't won out yet. Well, like focusing on that tech side of things, I mean, when we've listened to a couple of tracks, not very many, but you do listen to a few now and again, you think that didn't quite land how you thought it was going to. Yeah. And I just wonder what your thoughts on that. Do you reckon mixes have been rushed previously or is it the tech not Quite being there at the time like what are your kind of thoughts on i think i think it's exactly that i think the um i think initially when when apple launched spatial i think some of the labels were very much like we need content mm. and it was a case of you know rushing out the odd bit of catalog stuff um and not necessarily yeah. I, I guess maybe at the time you know like some of the mixers that were working on that stuff not you know they were coming to the thing completely new yeah. and not having a process in place mm. so a lot of it was guesswork mm. um and i think the thing that's put some people off atmos is um you know they might go out of the way to go and find a particular song that they like yeah, yeah that may not necessarily have been mixed that well in mm. atmos and then straight away that's them going, well no we don't like atmos <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not gonna listen to any more if you find the right content in atmos yeah. um then I think the experience can be great. Mm. Um, I like to think that we've kind of got a, a system in place that works where, you know, the stereo and the, the front end translates in a way that it, it does in the stereo. Um, but yeah, there are, even now looking back, you know, those rock spatial playlists in particular on Apple Music, mm. even now there's a few things in there where you can listen and think, mm, it's, it's not quite Mm. where you'd want it to but be. I suppose, like like you said, like, but the beauty of doing what you're doing is you are able to go back, revisit yeah. stuff, and re-mix, re-remix yeah. in, in Atmos again. Yeah, exactly. It's ultimately, you've got like, you know, like you get your remasters and things, you mm. know, like 10 year anniversaries and things. I've no doubt that down the line, you know, some of these mixes that I'm working on now, probably, you know, in yeah. 10 years time or something, might get some sort yeah. of Atmos remaster and, you know, end up being redone. and. Mm you know that's probably the case for some of these early atmos mixes yeah. Yeah. they may subtly get redone at some point mm. Mm. well it's like you said it the way you're p positioning things around the room is your personal preference yeah. obviously led by feedback but really yeah. it's whatever you think works yeah. so until you've tried something and heard it back and heard what other people think and and yeah got to grips with the technology 
I guess that those early ones were people just guessing. Yeah, this is it. And I think the, the idea then was people are working in, you know, in the rooms. And this is what I was saying about having, you know, you've got to get it sounding great in the room, but then sounding great in headphones. Yeah. Mm. And I've, I've heard a few things with, um, so with the binaural render settings that we work from in headphones, mixers coming into it fresh, you know, like working in the room that might not necessarily know about those settings mm. can then think, yep, yeah, sounds great in the room send off the mix, but they've actually done none of these settings mm. or everything's set to one thing. Right, yeah, yeah. And straight away, you've got a mix that just sounds, you know, washy. Yeah, so another question, Kurt, something that as a Spotify user, how far off do you think we are getting Atmos support on stream services like Spotify? I, I would like to think we're not far off. I think if Spotify come on board, then it changes the game for, for everyone. I think then we'll see We'll see a big boost in labels wanting um, things in Atmos, um, and we'll see a boom in independents wanting things in Atmos. And the fact that you can now create um, Atmos content in Logic, it means it's there for independent artists, you know, to to start creating from the off. Um, Spotify is one of those that, if however many thousands you know of songs release a day, it kind of makes sense that if independent artists can release through through Spotify. Um, I don't know how far off we are, but I got inside scoop for us. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I did. <laughs> but I think there will be, um, we'll see that same boom that we saw when when Apple went spatial. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of content needed in in uh, in Atmos. Mm. I think we'll see the same again with Spotify. Mm. But I think there'll be a lot more. Mm. I feel like we'll see a shift where pretty much most releases on a Friday will be in Atmos. Yeah. Be very busy then. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> So I think from all of our conversations, what obviously anyone that's been unsure on taking up Atmos or isn't quite sure if it is ready yet, I think really from what we've talked about today, it is if you've got the right product and you listen to the right tracks, how do people go about doing that? I would say, so you can actually listen on any headphones from Apple Music as long as you plug in um, on a Mac. Yeah. I think you can do it on an iPad and an iPhone as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as long as you're wired in you can listen to to atmos on any headphones mm -hmm. um which makes it more accessible mm -hmm. for most people and out of your tracks that you've mixed <laughs> what's been your favorite what's been your favorite to work on and what's your favorite to listen to i think favorite to work on is the the kyle minogue album mm -hmm. um so um padam padam is out at the minute um, that was a, a treat in itself to work on but then to do you know the next 13 tracks was um was brilliant yeah um that was a lot of fun and I think that kind of pushed me as a mixer to work smarter mm -hmm. and better um, and then to listen to um, I think to be honest I actually I listened back to the the Rita Ora album the other day for the first time since I finished it in like January mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's been a good you know six months or so mm -hmm. um, so listening back to that I was really pleased with how it's turned out yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah that was uh, I was going to say nice I surprise, but it's, <laughs> it was a nice surprise. <laughs> so there we have it, guys. We hope that you have thoroughly enjoyed this video just as much as we've enjoyed coming down here, Kurt, meeting yourself, getting to experience, listening to a couple of tracks that you've mixed in Atmos. So if you guys want to see more content like this, then please let us know down in the comments below. But as for right now, I think we're all going to spend the next couple of hours chilling with you, Kurt, listening <laughs> to some of your mixes. So thank you very much yeah, for today. Really no, no, no. Cheers, cheers for coming. I've, I've really enjoyed it. <laughs>